Two. Pretty sure you know how. All right, we're live. We're live on my Facebook. How about you, Brian? Yeah. I hate Facebook. This is so <laughs> much fun. This is so much fun. Going live with awesome. like with technologically impaired people, myself included. Yeah. Um it's it's yeah. Um this is why we pre record all our podcasts, right? Yeah, definitely. So um yeah, we'll just wait a minute, see if uh oh, see how many people jump on the yeah. stream. Guys, I have got the comments open on my screen on my other window. I've got the chat open here, so uh we are um we're recording monitor in the feed if y'all got anything to uh, to tell us if you've got anything to say just shout out to us uh we'll get it in on the podcast um the point of tonight's podcast um brian and i are going to be talking to a very very smart and easy to talk to nice lady called hillary i can't pronounce her last name mate did you write it down phonetically we should have should have looked at this before <laughs> well i don't have to introduce you actually she's not on the stream so i should probably go look yeah up. i should get on in a minute um <laughs> So uh, let me let me We're look still at trying it. to figure this out. You are. I'm streaming. I'm streaming. No problem. I don't know. What's wrong with Facebook's you? got this new live producer thing, and everything I put in is now trying to make me reset it. So. Oh goodness me. It's, yeah, this ain't fun. You should probably call Kyle. Yeah. Like this whole podcast is just going to be people laughing at, at, at you. At us and our yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bail on it again. I think. Hillary Hillary ja Jastrom. Jastrom is how you say her last name. I should have wrote that down. Um, she is a uh, author, but she's also uh, an author's author. She's somebody that coaches authors on how to auth. Is that correct? Yes, that's it. All right. Do you need help with OBS or are you going to make it? No, I'm going to throw a rock at my computer name and uh, okay. I just don't have a rock. Well, you just, <laughs> just, say, just say world star before you throw it and then that'll count. Yeah, yeah, that's, it. that's all I need. All right, so... Uh -huh. If you've never seen a slow motion train wreck, just watch a uh, yeah. middle aged reel to try to live stream on multiple platforms at once. I don't get why it works. I don't know. I do it at work and I come home and it doesn't work. But oh well. I'm just going to chat now. Let me check on Hillary. See if she's uh, coming on here. Where is she? What did I get myself into, man? She's on. There she is. Oh. All right. All right, guys. Hillary's about to join Hillary's us. In. If you guys are watching, there we are is. monitoring the uh, comment stream. There she is, wonderful Hillary herself. We're monitoring the comment stream. Throw us a thumbs up. Let us know you're out there. Um, and if you've got any questions for myself or Brian, or more importantly, if you've got any questions for Hillary, uh, toss them in the chat, and I will get to them. I'll read them out. I'll interrupt whatever it is Brian has decided to talk about, specifically with questions for Hillary. Looks like you're online, my dear. Can you hear me? Good stuff. Yes, hello. There we go. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, I don't have a snazzy background like you guys. Mine's Kyle, brand new today, uh, thanks to uh, Kyle. Make a, make oh. a, make a note, um, uh, Kyle, you need to make Hillary a background. That's it. I need a snazzy <laughs> background, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got Hillary on here who uh, is producing my book and uh, soon Sam's book, I believe, right? Yeah, absolutely. We've got yeah. plans, don't we, Sam? We do, we do. But I've got to get in between the lines for my coloring bit. I've got to make <laughs> sure it's like, man, writing a book is so alien. It's such an alien concept. There's fewer than what half a percent of people that ever lived will write one. How how small is that statistic? So the only thing that I know is the Amazon one, which is and this is a couple of years old, but it's only four percent of people that want to write books will actually write them. So 96% of people, <laughs> you know, they're not going to odds. And that's, uh, yeah. that's pretty decent. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool to be one of the, one the of elite. the elite. Yeah. Exactly. Elite. So, this is our first crack at a uh, multifaceted podcast. We've got me and Brian kind of hosting every week and Hillary uh, has kindly agreed to join us and tell us about her, uh, her career as a i don't even know what you are you're a book publisher but you're, you're so much more than that that's that's really difficult to um to convey because you don't just publish books you you guide people through the process mm. from from thinking about a book to the concept of the book to, to lining out the chapters and everything in between so 
I'm just going to defer to you, Hillary. I'm just going to ask you, you know, what in the hell is involved in writing a book? <laughs> you know, how do we get started on that? You know, it's um, this is where people get stuck, truly. So it's good to have this conversation because we can always see A, A, I'm here, right? B, I want to be here, which is I want to have the book, but I'm not quite sure what the middle looks like. And there's a lot of intimidation along the way. There's a lot of intimidating feelings. There's a lot of like, I'm in over my head. I don't know what direction to go. So it, it's a great place to start. What Brian and I talked about briefly is that you start even before you begin writing. So you start with the mindset and the mindset is, and we all know this, we're preparing our mindset, we're getting that mindset right. We all know this. We have to walk into this and say, I can do this. This is what it's going to look like. This is how I've prepared myself to do it. But writing a book is so weird too, because we're on, I often say we're on a balancing beam of believing we have something we want to share with the world, but then at the same time, knowing we need to be coachable enough to learn enough to put out just a super good product. So that's where the mindset comes in. Um, I'm a chipper and a blazer. So the chipper and uh, a lot of people will relate to this, which is just, we just like hack away at things, right? <laughs> I'm going to time block things. I'm going to make sure that I sit down and take my 20 minutes to do my transcriptions or arrange my notes or whatever the case may be. And if I'm a blazer, I'm going to time block like a week and get out of my way because I've moved things off the table so I can go ahead and get this done. So that's the first thing is we have to prepare for it. Now we can also over prepare at the same time. Then we get into analysis paralysis. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you I end up not doing anything. You just read. <laughs> yeah. you know, like you, yeah. you, you've, got, you've got lists that are pages and pages long, but you, you never know when to when to jump in and do anything. Right. And then, are you the rewriter of the list? Do you ever do this? Like, oh, I've got this <laughs> list and it's all junked up with stuff. So now I got to start a clean list over here that doesn't have anything until that one gets junked up, and then I got to do it again. Yeah, or if it's, if it's not that important, I just won't write it down. <laughs> exactly. And that's another way. So it's getting in touch to how I'm going to write this. What does that look like for me? What works for me? So to your point, Sam, I try to respond to people and be there for them in the way that they need. Okay, so I'm not going to say, all right, we're going to write a book right now. And so I want you to do it my way. Because then you're going to go, oh, wait, 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 wait. I just said I was going to write a book. I didn't say I was going to change who I am. <laughs> so we're not going to do that. I've had people do it um, like, what do they call that? It's like an, an org chart. Oh, it's a mind map. Some people have been like, here's me. And this is my main story. And over here, I'm branching off over here. And it starts to look like, and you'll appreciate this, Brian, spokes on a wheel, mm. right? So, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's important. You need to get in touch with, I am gonna do it, I am gonna be coachable. And how am I going to prepare when I hit the wall? Cause you're gonna hit the wall and you're gonna go, I don't wanna do this right now. I don't wanna do it today. So how do you prepare to do that with other things that you don't wanna do? So let me just ask you that guys, when you hit the wall and you've got something that you wanna do and then you go, oh, I don't wanna do this right now but I know I have to do it. What do you do? How do you get past that? I call you and what you yell at. I just, I just delegate it. <laughs> I just delegate it. I find the right person on the team and I put it in front of them. Say, this is what we need. Okay. That's a great, that's a great um, idea. Uh, that's, that's why we called you. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Here's, here's, here's a whole bunch of words in a big pile. Go make them into a book and look what happens. Right. It's magic, you know? Because so tell me why. Why is that intimidating to you? If I just threw a bunch of words at you in a big pile, why would that be intimidating to you? You want to field that, Brian, or you want me to take it? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, it gets overwhelming, honestly. We've talked about that, just as it's such a big thing that's out there that, you know, but I, I saw it today, the saying, you know, you need an elephant by one bite at a time, you know, and it's uh, it's the same thing. It's uh, you just basically start picking away at it, right? It's, you know, but I think what you do where you get the outline down of, break it down into small pieces that are attainable and 
little wins and little goals and until you put the whole thing together and you gotta you got a package um yeah. so simplify it basically take the overwhelming process and that's more than just books that's just business and life and take the big task make it into a bunch of little tests and you can complete the big test that way absolutely so, stop absolutely. it from being overwhelming you know well, you made me hungry for elephant man yeah man <laughs> like, <laughs> I, a one an elephant just goes right down doesn't it guys? i mean you know the thing that that intimidates me by it is like if i want like a I don't know, like a book that that's thick, that thick. What's that? Two hundred page book. That's that's many many words, and you know that that that's just. Yeah, I understand you got to start somewhere if you want to get it done, but that's like it's like standing at the bottom of a mountain and looking up and going, "Wow, shit, that's a lot of mountain in front of me." And uh, you know, sometimes you just need that little sherpa to guide you along, and then another little sherpa to push you. You know, and I, and I think that by by being intimidated by it it's not something that's unnatural i think the majority of people that like it's, it's a very rare breed that will sit down at a typewriter and knock out a novel you yeah know, well, I, that's, that's the beauty of it now is that you don't have to type it anymore you can speak it into you know speak it and then have it transcribed and uh you can speak your book now oh, like like in, a, so, like in a podcast yeah so i mean that we're both men of a uh, few words so uh <laughs> so if we uh if we just you know wrote down what we speak about we could do 500 pa you know pages in a book easy you were the first podcast interview i ever cut short brian <laughs> you and thomas <laughs> no you you i didn't cut no, thomas, I mean, thomas cut me uh, off too <laughs> like we went an hour and 15 or something like yeah. that we could have went another hour yeah i didn't cut I, I would never cut hillary off though <laughs> oh you're so very sweet well we're on now beginning our marathon here we'll be here for eight hours everybody just <laughs> brew a cup of coffee and let's now i i think it's important to rethink the process though so there's a couple of things one that gets people stuck is i need to know the order in which things are going to go so if i'm going to start brainstorming i can't keep moving ahead because i need to know the order and that is an absolute uh mistruth you don't need to know the order you just need to get it out focus on purging that's all you need to do the stuff is going to come up it's going to bubble up if you're talking about your life you know, I'm going to talk about six years ago, this happened. Oh, shoot. Then I, oh, I forgot this other thing. I got to work it in there. Great. Work it in there. Nobody's, nobody is saying that it has to be this perfect outline when you're done. There's plenty of time to move through progress, not even perfection, because we never get to perfection. And thank goodness we don't. What if we got to perfection? How boring would life be, right? But the point is that you're going to focus on rewriting your brain to say writing a book and the process of writing it has everything to do with taking imperfect action accepting that accepting you're going to suck sometimes i'm going to tell you right now and if you write it and you're like man i suck round of applause this is the worst pun there ever was it drives yeah. me crazy but round that, of applause for you okay? that is because terrible that is terrible yeah <laughs> That was like a that was a dad joke, but from a mum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I know. I I had to try it out. Is that like it's a? Is that like a new level? <laughs> have we hit a new? Have we hit a plateau? If you make someone smile, it counts. <laughs> low level. It's a very low level. But, I, but my husband's a dad, so I get these I get these jokes all the time. So I have to share them with you. But <laughs> the big misnomer is that really. Um, you're going to write the book, it's going to be perfect. And I think that's what people tell themselves. I wrote it. It's great. It moved the world. It's amazing. It's going to sell a million copies. No, right now it's probably going to suck because anytime you do anything, you're going to suck, right? Have, have you ever driven a stick shift? You guys, you have, haven't you? Wrong, that's mm -hmm. the wrong question. Like <laughs> two car guys here. <laughs> we, we, did, we did not suck at driving stick shifts. We were doing it when we were little kids. Like still do. Wrong question. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right all right started out at 14 i think i started driving stick yeah have you ever made a souffle how about oh, there that you go i definitely suck at that yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not something good to suck at yeah, yeah right okay. so you're gonna be a marine man and you're gonna embrace the suck okay you're gonna embrace it i'm gonna suck yeah you got it 
it's so I, I've never made a souffle, by the way, in case you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> but the first I, time, I the first time you do anything, it sucks. The the analogy yeah. I use is how many times you fall off your bike before you figured it out. Yeah, you know, absolutely. The first time yeah. you rode your bike, you thought you'd never make it. And like, if you scroll back and look at the first podcast me and Brian did last week, I mean, that sucked. This one's just improving. You know, isn't that right, buddy? No, they get better every day. I mean, I do my my message every morning. And I look back at some. So all my messages I just put up on YouTube. So they're live now. I don't know if you saw them, Hillary. And, oh, they um, are live. Okay. Yeah. So I got all my messages from Facebook. I put on my YouTube channel, Brian Lewis Realtor. And if you look back at my original ones when I first started, and they were like totally like just random, and then they started dialing in, and they get better every day. And you know, it is six o'clock in the morning when I'm doing them, and you know, it is rough, but uh, sometimes mm. it's pouring rain like today. Uh, you get that groggy morning feeling and it's raining out and you're riding a bike and you're like, why did I commit to this? But we're 84 days into 365. So and he's, we're getting there. He's definitely committed. But what he's getting at is the progress that he's made in those 84 days has been astounding. I mean, on, on day one, he, he was nowhere near it. And I challenge you to go back and watch your day one video and critique it, Brian, because, I mean, how yeah. nervous were you? How scared were you? Yeah, yeah. And, and not yeah. only scared, but like I feel like an idiot. Like, I still, I podcast all the time. I go live all the time. I do this shit all the time. And I still feel like an idiot. So, imposter syndrome, that always gets us, you know? Why am I up here? Well, who's listening to this? Yeah. But you know what? When people reach out to me and message me, mm -hmm. all that stops. All that, we, me and uh, Sam have shared some of the messages that people send us about our messages out there. We do, it's, yeah. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. When, when like, you're touching people and they're reaching out and thanking you for inspiring them, thanking you for getting them motivated and, you know, it's, I just I feel awkward purpose. sharing those in public, Brian. But I'm I'm quite happy to share them with you. It's like I've got a little buddy that I bounce them off of. But we we yeah. each we each get two or three a week. Of, of yeah. I mean, I've got a DM right now that came in. Excuse me, that came in while we were live. Starts. I'm very interested in starting my own business and just goes on and asking questions and will I be willing to uh, get lunch? And I'm like, of course, you know. I haven't replied to it, but like it just it's it's constant. It's every single day, yeah. and I want to get back to the books though. <clears throat> Because I feel like we're getting sidetracked from from what Hillary's here for. So your first book sucks, or your first draft sucks? Because yeah. I would be, I would be, I'm I'm incredibly nervous to put out my book because of of, of what's in it. Um, there's going to be a lot of me in it, and there's going to be a lot of um, judgment in it. And there's going to be some people that read it that love it, and there's going to be some people that read it that are, that are pretty annoyed with me. Um, so, you know, how do you how do you get over that and and deliver an honest and authentic product? That's a great question. It's one that I deal with a lot um, in terms of transparency. So I'm always encouraging you to be transparent, but I also have people who say, well, I want to write about this that's happening with my family, for example. Like if somebody is reuniting with their parents, maybe they don't feel like reliving or rehashing everything. Mm -hmm. And I really advise people to be as transparent as you're comfortable being. Um, understanding too, the reader is expecting you to be transparent, especially if you're a leader for the reader and you're saying, hey, I'm telling you to be transparent in my book. Mm -hmm. I'm a coach, I'm an advisor to some degree, and I'm telling you to own everything. But you know what? When I write my book, I'm not going to do that. How does that come across to people? That's very okay, hypocritical. Yeah, it is very hypocritical. And you're going to be they will feel betrayed, betray your reader and they're gone. I mean, that mm. that's just a, um, a very old kind of a, I don't want to say it's an adage, but it's a rule. You don't want to ever betray your reader, whether in fiction or whether in nonfiction. But there are ways to tell stories also without throwing people under the bus. So you can more or less recite what happened. This is the event that happened. This is what person A said. This is what person B said. I'm not call, calling them an SOB. I'm saying this is what they said. This is what I said. This is what transpired. That's a little different. Then you're recounting it and you're focusing on the actual actions that took place. So the interpretation then is up to the reader, but it, it's what you should be doing anyways, as you're writing. That's a demonstration of show don't tell don't tell the reader how to feel about it give the event mm -hmm. and say this is what happened now it's up to you to decide how you feel about it that makes a lot of sense it's uh you know i find in this uh this apex world the, the more real people get the more you connect 
Um, you know, we hear these podcasts, you know, when we hear this stuff that goes on, you, you know, we all talk about, you know, Tam, you know, me and Sam talk about, you know, being overweight and drinking too much and all the stuff that we bad things we've done in our lives that, you know, got us, you know, to certain points and made us hit a wall and recover. And when you get raw and emotional like that and you connect and it just really becomes real. And, you know, just, I think the book in the same way, people want to feel it. They want to be there with you in the moment and, and, and feel in their heart, what you were feeling. And you're going first. You're saying it's okay. I went first and I'm owning this. I also like to beat people to the punch with my bad behavior. So I will tell you all about my bad <laughs> behavior. So you don't have to yeah. wonder about it later. And then it comes out later and I don't know what to do with it. I'm going to own it right now myself. And it's funny, you guys, because I just got, I don't know if you saw my Facebook. I just got an, uh, an email today that said, um, I know what you did. I have dirt on you and you better pay me and whatever Bitcoin to this email address. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> What did I do? I'm really yeah. curious. What did yeah. you find out about me? Yeah, maybe it was exciting. I remember it again. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds, yeah. sounds a little like fishing to me. Um, it yeah, does. yeah, it but. does exactly. But yeah. that's where the the transparent piece is. You know, it, it, I'm the uh, you're the captain. I'm the navigator. Okay, so so you tell me, Brian, you're writing a book. You tell me, I want to talk about this, but I'm not comfortable about. It. I'm not ever going to say, well, that's it. We're done not doing the book. You have to do it hundred percent this way. You have to maintain that creative control mm. and be in charge of the words that you're putting out into the world. I will advise you on it. And it's up to you what you want to do with it. That, that's telling. I mean, you never know what people are going through until you open up about what you're going through and then they turn around and come back at you. Um, nobody ever opens up first. And it, that, that's the strangest thing is that the one of the main reasons I do my podcast is, is I started getting around more and more business owners and just chatting with them and meeting them for coffee and <clears throat> seeing how we could help each other. I realized that everybody was going through the same stuff that I'd been through, but nobody had the, 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 the courage to speak out and say it. They were all trying to uphold this image of I'm a success and I've got my shit together. And I don't know a whole lot of 40-year-olds. I mean, I know a few uh, because of Apex, but I don't know a whole lot of 40-year-olds that have all their shit all together all the time. I just, it, it doesn't happen, you know? Yeah. And we, we've all had issues down from weight loss and alcohol, alcoholism, even down, to, um, even down to the taboo that is miscarriage um, that we, it, it's forbidden to talk about in public. Yeah. But when, when you go through one, people reach out and they come out and they say, man, that happened to us. I'm so sorry. And all of a sudden, everybody's had one. And it's something that people will never open up to you about personal things unless you open up to them first. So I want to take that and put that in my book and see what happens. Well, definitely. It's we live, rare. We live yeah. in this world of Facebook where it's all, you know, rainbows and unicorns. Yeah. And uh, no one wants to share the bad stuff because everyone's afraid, I guess, maybe to be judged. Uh, I guess, you know. Some people uh, maybe well, have a nasty comment or whatever, and you know a lot of people take that to heart, and so they're afraid to put themselves out there to be judged or whatever. But at the same time, I think when you do put yourself out there and you get a little vulnerable, um, you know, it's uh, it really kind of makes you feel like you're not alone in the world with some of your issues. You know, like I said a miscarriage. You know, me and Sam talked about it. both of our wives had had miscarriages, and it was something that we connected on. It was like wow, that was like really horrible experience, and. You don't really have someone to share that with just to agree that it was a horrible experience and kind of talk it out and release it. Yeah. I feel a lot of times, you know, talking about stuff lets you release it, it lets you kind of free it, you know. Um, even like in the brain dump in the brain dump of writing a book, it's kind of like I'm release you release a lot of stuff in your brain that's been bounced around in it. You get to put it in paper and and you know, put out there. Well, you know, um, kind of it's freeing. It's a tremendous uh weight that comes off of you. It's very therapeutic. So, and, and not, I'm not really talking about when you're, when you're writing a novel, for example, or, or fiction, I am talking about the nonfiction and the boom that we're seeing now is that these are small business owners and they're talking about their life and they're interweaving the life lessons. They're going through that pain. But the beauty about that is that the pain that they've gone through goes on to help other people. And so it does give that pain a purpose behind it 
which makes it, I mean, it's not, it's not like you want to go around and ask it, why, why does this happen? Right. But <laughs> it's nice to know, well, I can take my worst moments and I can prevent somebody else from having such a horrible moment, or I can time collapse their, their struggle. If they're trying to put together a business, maybe they won't struggle as long or whatever the case is, or I can help somebody. Maybe they're on the brink of alcoholism and they start to recognize, oh my gosh, I'm doing these things. I better stop right now. So I've, it's like uh, the old saying is it's like pain shared is pain dispersed. I've never heard that one. Never heard it. I like that. Um, but I, I want to touch real quick on the reluctance of people to be open based on the reaction of certain people around them. And that when, when you first start out doing this, right, you'll have a specific group of friends that you've been with a while. And if you're open about certain things, you will get shot down. And I, I don't like to go back to this one, but we all know that the crab's in the bucket theory of that they'll pull you back down to their level <clears throat> but an amazing thing happens when you're honest and open is that the people that try pulling you back down if you keep doing it eventually they'll get bored and go pull somebody else and they'll leave you alone and you'll start attracting the people that have lived through the same things that you're, you've lived through and you'll start like now you know, years into this i'm surrounded by people that have got like like brian like <laughs> the exact same journey that i've got you know, we found each other through through openness and honesty. And you do get those naysayers in the beginning. And you do get the, you know, why are you doing this? Who the fuck you think you are? Tony Robbins posting all this stuff in the mornings and shit. Like, get out of my news feed. And you're like, you know what? You've got to ignore it. Because that's, that's the ones and twos. Like, one, two percent of your people are doing that. And everybody else, you don't know how many people are quietly cheering you on until you've been doing it long enough. And then you get these messages like Brian and I do. And I'm like, from people, I'm like, dude, you really think that? Wow. Yeah, I know. You're like, you're like this wow. guy? <laughs> I thought this guy was a dick. <laughs> you know? It's so true. It's so true. You're like, <laughs> you're like oh, wow. He, he listens to I mean, I got hit up by a, by a kid. I, I hadn't seen him since I went to school. I might maybe seen him twice in the street. And I went to school in England, and he hit me up the other week saying how he was committed to stopping drinking and how listening to my show had made him realize he was an alcoholic. And uh, I talked, I turned 41, and I did a 41 episode of what I'd learned, and he had just turned 40, and it really resonated with him. And I'm like, dude, you listen to my shit? Like, what in the world? I think I'm talking yeah. to the wall half the time. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like that. It can totally feel like that. I think that's a huge thing that we need to pay attention to is what our gut is telling us to do. So if your gut is telling you to do a podcast, if your gut is telling you to share your story or to write a book or whatever your gut is telling you to do, there's a reason behind it. And you might not know what that reason is. Like Brian, when you got started, you, I don't know what the thought process was, but it was maybe like, I'm just going to get on my bike and I'm just going to see how it is. And I'm just going to share this experience right now. And now this has become bigger than you mm. it's become oh no doubt like, yeah you're supporting people who are like where are you going today what are you going to do what's the mm. message today what did you discover and when you take that away then you start into this like responsibility thing like now you have a responsibility yeah, to i actually have to think about my message every morning where i used to just totally shoot from <laughs> it. i mean it's still unscripted it's still whatever pops into my head at the moment but i try and put a little more effort into it now i, I pay attention a little bit more and try and make the message mean more and you know develop it and you know it my message is a lot of time i tell everyone that's me speaking to myself when you speak when you speak out into the world you're speaking yourself into action so a lot of times the messages are stuff that i'm struggling with or have struggled with or may struggle with and by me uh, basically seeking the truth and, and basically sharing uh, the struggle, sharing, sharing out loud, it kind of holds me accountable to that. I mean, this whole thing became an accountability thing. I was at um, MDM and everyone there, you know, first, first look at Apex and it was wild. And I was like, all right, I got to be part of this. And everyone there gets up at the crack of dawn and does crazy stuff. Yeah, he's, he's got <laughs> FYE. It's, it's the best cult ever. That's yeah, all. It's it the is, best cult right? in the world. And, so I said, I got to start doing something in my life. I had done 75 hard. And when I did 75 hard, I got at least half a dozen people, if not more, that did 75 hard because of me. Um, it lost a ton of weight and stopped drinking. And I mean, it's just wild. Like everyone on Facebook, like just really cool. So 
that was kind of a little inspiration thing that was unexpected. I put it out on Facebook, not to like show off because that's my accountability. I'm not going to fail. So my 365 ride, it got public because Facebook's going to make me do it. Cause so like tomorrow morning when I'm tired, I don't feel like getting out of bed and it's raining. You know what? Facebook's waiting to see me out there. They're waiting to see my message. I'm getting out and I'm working out. I mean, I do 10 miles a day. I did 27 miles the other day, like nothing. I used to do 20 miles and get home. I couldn't walk all day. I mean, it's just, you know, and it's, it just becomes easy. It just becomes part of the routine. And now, you know, I got my morning routine down. I, I get out there and I get my exercise. I get my brain right. I say my message out, which I get a lot of times is me speaking to myself and me sharing what's in my head and, and what I think is important that I need to work on that. You know, I think everyone else, we're all in this together. I say it all the time. Um, we're all in this together. We're all having the same struggles. No one talks about it. And the other thing, uh, the tagline I started is fire starts fire. You know, when, when, when I'm fired up, Sam's fired it up, does, and yeah. we're fired up and, you know, Absolutely. it's like you inspire people and you don't realize the reach that we have out there. You know, I go through town, you know, I'm a small town here and people talk to me about my ride and I'm like, I've never seen you following me. I've never seen a comment. I've never seen a like, mm -hmm. but they're watching and you don't realize that they're no, they, watching. You don't realize how many people are watching. Like, it's incredible. I mean, I, I go for a walk every morning and I, I post it on my, uh, what's it, my Instagram story, but I don't do the, the live video in the mornings. And now Brian's got me thinking, well, hey, maybe I should maybe I should just do a live video for the last, you know, 10 minutes of my walk every morning and, and fire everybody up, make it, make it a, because like when you miss doing them, when you miss a post and people check on you and you're like, uh, you're right, was, yeah. was, there, to was there no post today? Like <laughs> we had some... <laughs> We we had some software issues a couple of a couple of months ago with our uh, with our podcast feed, and um, we had we had sent it out and it didn't propagate. And I I got about six text messages. Hey, no podcast today. What's going on? You guys all right? I'm like, well, shit. You don't realize how many people are watching. Yeah, you yeah. absolutely don't. And you don't. I mean, what you guys are doing is easily creating a book as well. And I mean, that is what what Brian is doing is all of that. I mean, think about that, Brian, it's, it's amazing. You started one day saying, I'm gonna turn this camera on and I'm gonna put myself into the world. Now it's gonna become a book. This is, it's crazy, you know. It's, it's fun, yeah, it's- um... and You're answering, you're answering what, it's like how you said you talk to yourself. I don't know, I see these epiphanies, they're like streaks, almost like shooting stars that shoot into your brain from the universe. And when we get them, I better go on. I better do an Instagram story and take my walk. I better go get on my bike. I better start, uh, you know, start writing my book today. That is the universe telling you this is the direction that you need to go. And you maybe don't know why yet, but you will. You'll figure it out. And it, even if you sat down and you were like, I think this is why, you would probably come back later and go, oh, that wasn't why. It was over here. It was, <laughs> you know, so, but the biggest thing is that capitalize on that as soon as it hits you capitalize on that don't second guess it oh should i shouldn't i Probably should i create that. these memes what I, who cares stop the guessing and do it yeah. that's what you need to do what would you say the biggest obstacle to somebody getting started writing a book is because that sounded very much like the biggest obstacle i think it is the biggest obstacle when we give ourselves that time to go back and forth on it, should I, the, the biggest thing uh, is um, who's going to listen to me? Who's going to read my book? Nobody's going to read it. Nobody's going to care. Why am I going to do it? One of the sayings that I love the most is if I help one person, it was worth it. And so we, I don't see the universe as a linear thing. I give to you, you give to me, and we ping pong back and forth. Mm -hmm. I see, I give to you, you give to this guy over here, he gives over there, he gives here, and that comes back to me. And I don't do anything to propagate that type of reciprocal effect, <clears throat> but it is just what happens. It's kind of like when you give to somebody and you feel so good that it feels selfish, almost like you did it for yourself. I totally but, do that. I, I do that all the time. Yeah, and I'm just like, yeah. man, that, you know, that felt so good. Uh, wait, my only reason for doing that was so I would feel good. And then is that a moral conflict? Yeah. <laughs> right. Because I, yeah. I get joy from bringing people joy. It's what I live yeah, for. It's helping people. It's seeing those, good to do good. seeing those smiles. And stuff. Ever since I stopped focusing on money and started focusing on people, life has just been 
infinitely better. So I'll do stuff for people, and then I'll just sit there all smug and go, wow, it feels really good. And then I'm like, wait, wait a minute, I was being selfish by doing that because I wanted to feel that way. <laughs> totally. Exactly. Exactly. But in terms of writing your book, I think there is, it's almost like quitting smoking. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Well, you've quit drinking. Okay, so you know the way that you quit drinking is absolutely cold turkey. I'm done. There's no more excuses. I'm not allowing myself. I'm not falling off the wagon. I'm not doing any of those things. When I quit smoking, finally, for the 17th time, <laughs> that it stuck. It was like- again. <laughs> Yeah, again, I was like, I don't care what kind of day you've had. I don't care who's pissed you off. I don't care what kind of heartbreak you have. You are not picking up that cigarette. I don't care what it is. I don't care if your favorite pet dies. I don't care because you made a commitment to yourself. And that is how you have to approach anything, including writing a book. And I will tell you something. If you want to write a book and if you don't do it today, you're you're screwed, man, because you will do it. You have been hijacked in your brain that you want to write a book. Now it is a matter of when. It is not if, it is a matter of when. And if you don't, if you're one of those 96% of the people who don't do it, you'll die haunted. So there you you'll have it. Wondering. You just heard it live from Hillary. If your pet dies, you have to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> You have got to be so hardcore with this. And you also have to accept I'm going to suck. So every single book that I've helped with, and I've helped New York Times bestselling authors, I've helped Wall Street Journal bestselling authors, a bunch of Amazon bestselling authors, they have gotten that first draft to me. There is no way in hell that could have been put out. No <laughs> way in hell. It is not until I see you crawling across the finish line on your nipples with blood streaming down your face that I know you're done, okay? Yeah. So you got to commit and you got to keep coming back to get it done. And you have to have tough nipples too. <laughs> That's a new one. Yeah. I, not, I was just right. imagining Brian crawling on his nipples. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't gut, remember what. Do the, the nipples the move first, independently yeah. of each other? Can they actually? <laughs> yeah, can independently. It, and no. then you know you're done. That's right. Goodness but you, gotta, you have to do the work. You have to earn being an author. You're not going to write it and have it catapult to bestseller. So wrap your mind around that process. I want the retraining of the world to begin. I'm not even kidding. Retrain yourself to think that I'm about to enter into the trenches. I'm going to suck for a while. Then I'm going to emerge victorious. I like that. I like that. I mean, that's that's how you get better at anything. Like you, know, you, you start, right? I sucked at the guitar the first time I played it. You know, yeah. I mean, I I still suck, but not nearly as much. You Sucks know? less. Yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed because I tried to play the guitar. And my husband had to sing it to me, three, five, seven, seven, one. And I was like, that's too fast. Oh, <laughs> not winning guitar hero there, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Mm, that, those, no. Those numbers messed me up on the guitar. I, I was trained as a musician, and, and you get to tab, and it's finger two on string five in hole number three, and you're just like, what? And then one day, it was like I had a Rosetta Stone, Stone moment. Like, Wait a minute, that's an A. If that's an A, then that must be an A, and that must be an A. Oh, here we go. And like within two months, the entire fretboard opened up for me um, after two years of struggling to, to, to learn. So I was, I was quite pleased with that. But um, we, we did get a little off topic for book writing there, didn't we? We did, but it relates to so many things because it's all mindset oriented in terms of book writing. So let's get technical now. Mm -hmm. Now we've got the mindset down, right? We know we need to approach this. I'm going to suck. I love myself. Yay. Mm, I love myself, man. I, I am awesome. And I'm awesomely going to suck right now. Now I'm going to do it. Great. I got it done. You're going to enlist people that you need to enlist. Um, I'm a huge fan of not paying for shit. I don't want to pay for. So I like to boil it down to the people that you need and the people that you don't need and where you can kind of cut corners a little bit. Like if you've got an English teacher, you know, in your life, that's your favorite English teacher and you're still in contact or your grandma used to teach high school English or whatever. Those are great proofers. Those are mm. great 
people to be beta readers and say, hey, sweetie, this doesn't really make sense. And can you redo this? Or how else can we write this? Those are great people that can help you cut some corners. Where you don't want to cut corners is on your cover. You never, ever, ever, I, kiss, I cannot stress this enough. People can see you coming if you don't have a perfect, and not in a good way. And if you don't have a professionally designed cover, they're going to look at it and they're going to go, mm, I'm not, I'm not going to read this because the guy obviously doesn't care enough about his own work. Then he's not going to care about the message to me. So I'm not going to read this. It's not. It's like a bottle of wine. I pick bottles of wine by the cool label. Do I'm you sure, really? I'm sure I'm not the only one. That's yeah. got a cool label. Let's try this one. That's got a cool label. Let's try that one. Yeah. And it's a confessional, seriously. Because some people would be like, I read books because they are lovely and whatever. And you're so full of shit. I, so I, I feel funny. violated by that accent, by the way. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Completely violated. I, 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 I knew that woman. You know, what? I, knew, I knew her. Your accent is on my phone. That's who my what? Siri is. He's the English man. So <laughs> now even, and and then well, he'll like give directions out, and he'll be like, "Turn on Clarington Road," and I'll be like, "How? The, what is that road?" He's totally saying it wrong. That's so, not but, no. Like don't. Now you call your phone, Sam. No. <laughs> <laughs> I call. Hey, Sam. Can you look at something? Yeah. So yeah. that that's the first thing. <laughs> it's great. like. <laughs> get your get your mindset right get ready to roll figure out where can i save my dollars if that's a consideration if it's not you're gonna have an ensemble of people help you write a book you're gonna have probably a couple of editors you're gonna have a proofer you're gonna have a cover designer you're gonna have a formatter so those are those are some things like oh i want an interior formatter well you don't have to do that if you can do a marginally good job and you want to make yourself crazy doing the headers that will just repopulate themselves for hours on end while you pull your hair out, you certainly are welcome to do that, right? You can learn how to upload it yourself. There's a, those are different things that you can do. You can take classes and learn uh, different ways to write and things of that nature, or you can just go full bore at it and then say, I want this whole team of people, I'm gonna hire them all and whatever. But there are different ways to approach your book and, and what you need is going to be different based on your need. It's gonna be different based on the type of book you're writing. Some people are writing a business book, so they're just gonna very, you know, just emphatically talk about business, that's it. I don't want any backstory in it. I'm not gonna share about my experiences. I just wanna talk about business processes, systems, scaling, this is what you do. Great, you probably don't need content editing then. Content editing is the deepest dive editing. It's developmental editing. It's extracting the storytelling, the dialogue. It's explaining to people like, I'm not really seeing the scene, put me in the scene, sharing the thoughts. It's that type of coaching. It's some of the structural pieces. You probably don't need that. So you need to know what kind of book am I writing so I understand what kind of services am I going to need. And any editor or publisher should be able to advise you on that. So it should never be, there should never be an editor or publisher that says, well, that's it. That's the, that's the deal. And I don't really care what you're writing. You know, I want you to write me a big check right now. That's not, that's not in good conscience, you know, what you, what you should experience. And if you do experience that, I would run far away and not look back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ride a bike. <laughs> Or ride a bike, whatever. Ride it on. Yeah, yeah. But, um, no, for me, um, it's a, it's an overwhelming task, and you've I've been there more than just an editor, as a friend and a and a coach in the process. And uh, we talk a lot more than books, and you know, I don't like to talk much, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're shy. You're so shy. I'm shy. So, um, but no, it's really the process. Uh, you know, doable. Um, I got the bug in me again at MDM, and I'm a big crazy go big or go home. Obviously, 365 days of riding. Um, I could do big things, commit to it. And, you know, that force of average idea that, uh, you know, Ryan talks about, and it really sticks with me, like just do big things to stand out in the world. And so, I mean, why not? A big thing. Why not? It's a big thing, you know, like, and then leave a legacy is something I've always liked, you know, you go into Disney. I think it's, uh, 
was at Epcot as a leave a legacy and you put your name on the wall there and um that's something so thing that always stuck in my head leave a legacy like what are you leaving behind for the next generation you know a book stays behind you know for you know for other people for your family for your kids your grandkids that's something that you're gonna leave a mark on the world that's never gonna go away granddad wrote Um, a book you know if if my if my granddad or my great granddad had wrote a book you bet i would have read it several times you know definitely so so you know you are gonna leave a legacy anyways because the legacy is just going to be how you live your life, but it's not as deliberate as if you wrote a book. So, you know, my, my grandpa never wrote a book, but I will never forget that he introduced me and cultivated this love of reading. We would go to the lake every year in Minnesota and um, he was reading it by Stephen Mm -hmm. King. And I was like, I'm out on that. Sorry. What? I'll see you all next week. <laughs> <laughs> so I was probably like 10, 11 years old. And I said, Grandpa, can I read that when you're done? And that and and he said, yep, you can. And I tore through that book like it was on fire. And that ignited a spark in me that has never died since that day. So that's his legacy. But if it, if he had sat down and if he had written a book, I wonder what he would have said. And I also think that a legacy driven book is more uh, prevalent in men than it is in mm. I women. I can see I that. Think. Yeah. yeah. yeah like men are like uh, the namesake, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I just want to add something real quick, Hillary, and that I'm 41 years old and I still check storm drains before I walk past them. <laughs> uh, I just finished reading Billy Summers last night. It's Stephen King's latest book. I haven't. And uh, <laughs> and I wrote a book about a serial killer's wife. So I also wrote a novel that took me eight years to write. Uh huh. George came home <laughs> late again tonight. What? I wonder what all these stains are. <laughs> It was. Why do my a, why do my steak knives keep going missing? There was a laundry scene. There was also like a meat tenderizer scene. Why oh can, yeah. Why oh can, yeah. Why can't I find my saw? It yeah. was crazy. God. Being the wife of a serial killer must be such a chore, man. Yeah, yeah clean up. <laughs> <laughs> the knives always going missing out the kitchen. I know. All right. Know. It's just a, it's <laughs> enough. Enough. So we need to uh, we need to get back on to write in books um what else do we need to cover in the final few minutes of this episode that the guys uh especially the guys in apex are going to find useful when it comes towards uh starting out on the road to put their own books together so first of all i need that outline okay whether you do it with me whether you do it with somebody else or whether you do it yourself you need an outline so it's a map so you know where you're going your outline you'll have each chapter is going to have an objective your chapters are going to have bullet points that support the objective. Just like you're giving a speech, you sit up there with your note cards and whatever, I'm gonna talk about this and these points, that's the same damn thing. Then if you wanna jump into the new century with us, and especially if you're a speaker and if you have a podcast, speak your book. You've got to speak your book. Some people are like, I love the feel of, of my fingers on the keys and I love to even longhand write some things or whatever. That's super awesome, spectacular. It is going to take you a long time to do, but if you speak your book, you can use um, one of two programs and Brian knows this, Otter like the animal, Otter, O-T-E-R, I'm sorry, O-T-T-E-R dot A-I is one. Or rev, R E V as in Victor.com, rev.com. And it's just on your phone too. So you can go for your walk, you can go for your jog, whatever, and make sure you've got your outline with you. So you can say, I'm going to talk about this point now, blah, 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 blah. Get that done, block that time. You would be amazed at how few words are used in a chapter. I only use between five and seven minutes. So some people are like, I'm going to rattle on for like an hour and a half. And I'm like, well, that's totally great because you're going to have a bunch of shit cut. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) No, Thomas told me that about his book. He's like, God, I cut about half my book out. (laughs) Yes, because 
it's like clearing your throat in the beginning like i'm gonna just uh we're gonna start talking about a little bit of uh and then i'm gonna kind of get into uh okay that's great when you finally get into it and it's gonna get better as you go we are gonna cut those nuances i'm gonna cut the yeah as well as uh-huh very really just blah 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 all of that shit's gotta go right and that's just part of the process but if you do that outline dictation time block it you can easily dictate a book in a week also, if you have a podcast, write meow, or you have some sort of other existing media content, go ahead and upload that to YouTube, especially if it's a video, you can make it into a video. They do an automatic transcription for you, which is super awesome, spectacular. And then you get that off to an editor and boom, you're on your way to getting your book done. Did you just say meow? I, did, yeah. I have four cats no you just you totally you missed you missed the setup for the next line the meow <laughs> okay well set me up again did, did you just say meow yes i don't yes i did all right so there's gonna be no more <laughs> super troopers jokes on this podcast uh i missed it too <laughs> did you miss it like, like am i not i'll, I'll find i'll find a link i'll find a link okay okay thank you i appreciate it though. yeah <laughs> All right, what else do we have to cover before we let Miss Hillary off of this show? We're going to talk about uh, some of the uh, famous people that uh, Hillary's uh, worked in her books Oh, for. yeah. Let's, who, who, uh, as let's talk the, about uh, your credentials. Mr. Apex. Mr. Apex. Mr. Yeah. Apex, for sure. Ryan Stuman, all of his books. Uh, he was so gracious to let me cut my teeth on his books because there was at one point where he was like, this is in the very beginning. He's like, you got to get better at this shit. And I, like, <laughs> I love him. <laughs> but he would say that. Like, he would yes. totally and say I that. And I was like, yes, that is absolutely right. But somebody coming back and telling you that forces you. You're going to make a decision. I'm either going to get better, and I'm going to get better to a point that I can do this, or I'm not going to take the challenge and I'm going to go sit back down. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to get better because that's just the type of person that I am. You guys get that. If somebody mm -hmm. said that to you, you got to get better. Accepted. Right? Yep. Challenge yeah. accepted. Let's do yeah. this. Exactly. You wouldn't be like, well, screw you. I'm not going to get better. Blah, blah, blah. Right. <laughs> so <clears throat> you get better. Write me out. I set you up, Sam. <laughs> No, the, the joke is gone. It's over with. The joke is gone. Like, the, 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 the people that have seen <laughs> the people that have seen Super Troopers will be laughing, but the rest of us. Oh, Super Troopers! Uh -huh. That is an oldie but a goodie. Denise yeah. Richards. Yes. Oh, is, is it really old now? Am I that old? Yes. I'm older old. than you, man. So. Like, I'm only 29. Are you kidding? I watched I watched Pulp Fiction the other day, and nobody's got a cell phone. Oh, the big the big <laughs> boss. What's his name? Bing Rains. The brick. Bing Rains yeah, is one. Yeah, he's, the only, he's the only one. Like, nobody's got a cell phone. Nobody's got an iPhone. Like, there were there were four kids sitting around in that room eating breakfast, and not one of them was looking at their phone. I don't know what they were doing. Like, it's honestly just, crazy to think about the technology we've seen in our lifetime, and that we talk to each other live and look at on our phones. I mean, it's just wild. We were from beepers, you know, rotary phones, to the cord stretched down the block when you're chatting to the girlfriend on the phone, you know, and tied up everyone in the house with the yeah. cord get off the phone get off, get off the, the phone. phone i gotta use the phone and now and then it was, then it was get off the internet i need to find <laughs> yeah yeah oh my god yeah aol internet. dial up oh my god how horrible was that that we was should, crazy yeah. we should just that do a whole like we should do a whole episode about how old we are remember yeah, re sure. rewinding cassettes with with you with your pen like with that yeah yeah just yes, like absolutely. Yeah. You get stuck there, oh. you eat the tape, you have to rewind it. Yeah. And sitting there waiting <laughs> yeah. for the song to come on on the radio and trying to press record and not get the DJ's voice on it. Did you yeah. guys? Oh, yeah. Mix oh, yeah. Mixtapes, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you give them to girls that you liked? Up until I was about 11, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say last like week. 49. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you just made one last week. What do you thought? Uh, no, I just, yeah. I, just make, I just make Spotify playlists now. I'm like, here you go. Just playlist. Send them a playlist oh, there. Yeah. I love it. I. On a, I there was a there was a song came on the other day. It was a, a really old Queen song, and the only memory I had of that song was putting it on a mixtape for a girl when I was about ten. <laughs> that is awesome. I did gymnastics to Queen when I was seven years old. I didn't know it then, but I had like the coolest coaches back then. Now I can be like, man, they were really awesome <laughs> doing gymnastics to Queen. Like nobody can. Nobody That's it. Them. That's it, Brian. We got to make a podcast about how old we are one week. Yeah, that, that would actually be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Way back in the day. I got I'm nothing. I got I'm nothing. Park, parking lot parties, listening to music back in high school. 
parking lot parties. Oh my God. And kids don't do that anymore. I kids know, don't, don't know what's like, good. That's because they've all got cell phones. <laughs> yeah. Kids don't do anything anymore. They just talk to each other. They text each other when they're standing next to each other. But do you remember like you go to a house party and then like you go down to the basement and like the good seat was on the washer and then you guys <laughs> would have like a keg and then you would come home and like pass out on your lawn or you'd have to be all sneaky, you know, so your mom wouldn't catch you. You remember doing that? I remember my no, friend. Uh, no, no, yeah, never, you're never did anything like that. <laughs> no, never. No, nothing like that. Nothing at all. We We were good. We were good. My friend uh, Rob used to stand him up against the door when he was drunk and ring the doorbell and run. So then when his mom opened the door, he'd fall in. <laughs> we actually did. We actually legit delivered one of my buddies in a wheelbarrow one time. Just left oh, him, gosh. left him on his front, left him in his front yard in a wheelbarrow. I love but, it. Um, the, they tell the story at his wedding. It all comes for a full circle. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. well damn all right it's about time to wrap this up hillary um thank you for coming and being our guest guinea pig on this little uh this little three-way interview it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you about books and everything before we get off here uh for those guys watching and for those guys that catch it on the replay what are your socials and where can they follow you and find you well, first of all, thank you. I'm honored to be the guinea pig very much. And I had a blast. You guys are so fun. Yeah. Um, thank you. They, thank yeah, you. yeah. Where can they catch me on the socials? Probably Facebook is the best way you can get me on Facebook. Or you can find me at J Hill Creative, one ljhillcreative.com, and then send me an email. We're in the middle of rebranding and making things even better than they were before. The other thing is I do have a podcast called Go Book Yourself. It comes out every Monday and it's full of writing tips like we just talked about. I'm so, going to add that to my list. Say that one more time. Go book yourself. Go book yourself. That's right. That is a play on That is a play on my shuffle. It's in my shuffle. That's a <laughs> play on words. Yeah, I've never, no, I've never heard that. I'm going to go pick that one uh, pick that one add it to my Add it to my list. I'm very much the consumer of content, especially at uh, stuff that I want to learn about. So, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, of course, Brian, you can reach out to me or Sam, and we'll connect you too. That's, uh, that's what we do. Oh, yeah. We're connectors. We're always, always. connecting people. Love it. Always. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap this one up. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the comments that you left on the live stream. I sincerely appreciate all of you. And uh, from me and, and Brian and Miss Hillary, you all have a wonderful evening. Good night. Yes, yes. Have a great week. Good night. Fire starts fire.